YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you could join me again for another fun video on plants. And this video I wanted to talk about in our fun little quarantine is my favorite home decor plants. So I recently just moved. I told you guys this 37,000 times and nothing is set up yet. Everything is so haphazard. So I can't wait to do another like apartment tour and do a nice little house band tour for you once everything is set up. But while I was going through and deciding what plants I wanted where and deciding what aesthetic I wanted, um, I've explained this in many videos, but I like to cultivate my plants while I do love plants. I like them to look like they are part of the decor. I don't like it when it's like a little, like I like it to be jungly. Like don't get me wrong, I have way more plants than the average person, but when it doesn't have a story and it's very haphazard and they're just everywhere, that gives me anxiety. <laughs> I like having a story and cohesion. I like to feature my plants in decor, so it's more of like a boho we plant look. I don't know. I, it still looks like an obscene jungle to many people that I know, so doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about my top 10 favorite plants for home decor. So as I go through and I'm designing things and I want things to look a certain way, I want to explain to you why I think these plants are the best plants to decorate your home with. Without further ado, my top 10 favorite plants for home decor. So guys, we have been in quarantine. I think I'm on my 11th day now. Like I've only left to go to the grocery store and to the doctor, turn up. So I actually sat here and drew out a list of what I think my favorite plants for decor are. And um, yeah, I actually sat here and ranked them and I kind of agonized over this, so I'm afraid. Number 10 is sedum. What I have in my hand is a type of sedum. It's a type of succulent. I have a lot of sedums that I like. I can't find the specific name of this one. It is a type of sedum, but this is number 10. I have this little green guy. First of all, I love the color, and you guys are gonna hear me say a lot of similar things like texture. This is a plant that adds texture to a space. So eventually this will become trailing. But what I like about it is if you take a look, it's just a very unique plant. It draws your eye in a way that a regular leafed plant wouldn't. The color is beautiful. I love the con. I don't like how low it sits in this pot, but I like the contrast of the white and the gray on this pot. It's, um, I don't know. So this is my number 10 just because I tend to think when I'm going through and decorating my house, this always comes into my head as something to put in like a bookcase or right now it's on my desk because I honestly think it's adorable. I love the way it looks and I think it just is such a statement piece in terms of a succulent. Um, they require a lot of light. I have mine in a southeast facing window right now, but they also require very low water. I water this guy probably once every three weeks. Um, you can tell he's starting to bend a bit towards the sun, so you, you know, you want to rotate that little sucker. Like I said, this is a type of plant that adds texture to a space. Number nine, I want to get more into cactus. So my previous apartment didn't really have the best cactus light, and I want to get like a big statement cactus, but for now, my statement cactus is not very big, but it is my pickle cactus. And this again is very out of control, but if you take a look at the texture, it looks like it has little pickles on it, which I think is really cute. But it's very unruly. It's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to stand straight up, but I dig the unruliness of this pickle cactus. It, when, for me, when I'm decorating something and I think of this guy, um, he kind of bohos up a vibe for me. So if I have a bookcase or I have a section of my desk or something that's just looking a little too flat, a little too unlayered, you put this guy like on the corner of a bookcase and his tendrils hang out and it just adds this layer of decor where sure he can be a little unruly, but if you put him in the right space that is very you know, uniform, it can just bring a more unruly boho vibe to a shelf or to a desk area. Um, I haven't decided 100% where I want to put him, but if you're doing like a ladder shelf or you're doing a bookcase, like if you put the books, if you put the books and then this guy in front of the books and it kind of just hangs out, I mean, obviously books you don't reach for that much, even though this is not like a prickly cactus. Um, but yeah, 
I love the vibes that this guy gives. I put him honestly just in a little candle votive and I think he looks hilarious and it's a piece. It's a statement piece. It's, it's a boho vibe to add to a shelf. And I love that about my pickle cactus. Number eight is my Pilea peperomioides or peperomioids, I don't know. Pepperoni. Are any of us gonna remember how to speak English after this quarantine anyway? Simply for the shape. Of course, there's not many plants that give you like this perfectly round shape. I think these are tough. Um, this is the longest I've actually had one that stayed relatively healthy. I have noticed that this is the type of plant that you can underwater, but you cannot underwater it too much, but do not overwater it. <laughs> Oh my God, it'll get so soggy. I actually water it from the bottom because I've killed maybe two or three of these. This is the one I've done the best with so far. And the reason I love it for decor is it just breaks up the monotony of regular shaped leaves. So when you, I like the way, I don't have a big one yet, but a lot of people will use the big tall tree version because this will grow straight up on a stalk with all these round lily pad looking leaves and it gets really big and it becomes a really big statement piece. So I want one that becomes that statement piece, but I also think it's a statement piece on its own with, you know, just the regular leaves because they are so perfectly round. So when you are decorating, it can give a cool, cool little farmhousey vibe if you put it in front of like a chalkboard or something, or, you know, it just breaks up that regular shaped leaf pattern you have going on. So if you put it on a shelf with other plants, it has that unique shape that, you know, breaks up having too many plants that look similar. My next plant is the Neon Hartley Philodendron. I showed you my big guy that I have, that he gets pretty big, smaller one downstairs, and I love the Neon Hartley Philodendron for its color. It breaks up a lot of darker greens or Kelly greens, and I think it brings a lot of color to, you know, sometimes I like that look of like white, dec white decor and darker greens, but sometimes when you're just like, why does this look so boring and it's a bunch of plants together? Sometimes when you want to do like staggering plants, it's easier to do some vining, some here. So I have experience with my Hartley philodendrons. They can get bushy, they can kind of just regular Hartley philodendrons bring in beautiful colors too. I love the regular green of Hartley philodendrons and their care is kind of low maintenance. Um, their watering schedule is, you know, maybe once a week, check the moisture on them and they're not super high demanding light plants. Um, and they'll also let you know when they're thirsty. They'll get well tea, you give them a drink and then they bounce right back. They bounce back great. So the reason I wanted to add it is because I just think it just adds a wonderful element. I love the heart shape and I think the neon color really adds an extra element. But I also think the regular Hartley philodendron tendrils and pretty little heart shapes are really unique and fun and cool too to add to a space. So that is my number seven. Number six is Scandaptus Pixis. Um, mine kind of looks like poop right now because like I said, we just went through our move so I need to clean him up. But the reason I like this plant is it's two tone leaves make it look textured and it gets very bushy and it gets very viney. Um, so it can be a beautiful piece, but I also love it for its dusty color. It's another perfect color piece to put in with your plants. And since it's two-tone and it kind of has that silvery bluish shade, bluish green, I think it adds another dimension and element to a plant shelf. So, you know, your regular green color gets a nice little. So this is another color that I love. It's the regular um, silver leaf philodendron. That kind of goes with my Skedapsis Fixis. I like having them just because the, I don't want to say, it's kind of, the dusty green shades. I really like the dusty green because it just adds an extra special element. The reason I chose this one over this guy, even though he gets cool tendrils, is the full grown ones of these, I think looks really cool. And I think the color is just something interesting to look at other than the other leaves that can get kind of boring to look at. I don't think there's any such thing as a boring leaf to look at, but the reason I like this is because it's a color and the tech and the way it's two-toned and the texture breaks up decor and color with plants. 
My number five is pretty self-explanatory. It's a bird of paradise. How can a bird of paradise not be a statement piece? It's a tree. It's basically a giant tree. Um, I have abused my bird of paradise. I brought it indoors, outdoors, outdoors, indoors. I've moved it to seven different rooms. I've moved it to a new apartment. I've used and abused. And I actually recently, you'll see my bird of paradise. He doesn't look that great, but I cut him up. I cut like six leaves off of him recently to basically make him smaller and basically start over with him because he was, had a lot of burned leaves and he was not in the right space in my old apartment. But the look that you can get from a bird of paradise, um, that really I think can send you over into, if you're into the minimalist vibe, the bird of paradise can give you that kind of like, reaching very minimalistic element if you just have like the bird of paradise a big bird of paradise with a couple leaves and a couple of other you know plants but my bird of paradise also kind of sends me over just to that super tropical vibe i just like the vibe that i get from my bird of paradise it is a tree so it I like that we're bringing in you now the vertical element. Um, so fiddle leaf figs and everything like that, yes, they've had their day, but my bird of paradise, I, though I've used and abused it like I told you, it's still here, it's still with me. I literally went like one winter only watering it twice and it was still alive. So birds of paradise are pretty easy to take care of. They may never bloom in captivity, but I love them just for their foliage alone. The foliage on them is just fantastically gorgeous. So. A bloom would be nice, but just know that they rarely ever bloom in captivity, especially up here in the frozenness of Philly. Number four, I could talk about until I'm blue in the face, but it's string of pearls. Again, texture. The texture of a string of pearls, it's like a cascading curtain coming down. If you wanna go for that boho vibe, I think a string of pearls is the perfect boho vibe. Um, these can be a little bit prone to pests, and I have actually killed one or two by over caring for it because I always wanted to water it. I always wanted it to be, you know, taking care of it. I've noticed it that if I just water it like once every two and a half weeks a little bit and keep it in a south window, it's happy. You put all of your plants together and the leaves and you have all those leaves, you throw this in the middle. Um, I think it can give you like a very majestic fairy-like appearance. It just gives you dimension when you have all your leafy plants together and then you hang this in the middle. It just adds another dimension to your plant decor that draws your eye right away. So it's not just like, oh my God, this is like a jungle. It looks a little more curated. It looks a little more collected. And this color is just fantastic. It's like a Kelly green, bright green that I think it's just beautiful and that's why I love decorating with this. It's like, I don't need curtains when string of pearls are around. It's like, I would rather just have a string of pearls curtain. Number three, call me basic, but it's the Monstera Deliciosa. I love the look of the lone Monstera leaf. I love the look of the minimalistic looking Monstera. I love the look of the minimalistic giant Monsteras that you see out there. Um, my Monstera, he's a little tough right now, but I do think that when your Monstera puts out a perfect leaf and you're just looking at it and it's got a couple leaves on it, I have one that's smaller. <sighs> I hate to say this, but it looks very aesthetic. It looks very boho-y. It looks very tropical and jungly. It just brings a different element to a space when you bring in those beautiful and lush monstera leaves. And monstera is a really easy plant to take care of. Like I said, I have beat the crap out of mine by putting it in different dark corners because sometimes I get really ahead of myself and I really want it somewhere that I know it's not gonna work. The monstera has seen its day. It's so 2018. Talk about something else, Meg. It's spelled about the fiddle leaf fig, which seemed to be like of 2019, but nope. I think the Monstera is a vibe, and I still like that vibe. Now this was really hard for me, and it kills me to put this at number two, but my number one is just like, come on. But number two is my personal favorite plant to put in my house, and it is the regular, not variegated, but regular string of hearts. I've talked about this before. I love the vibe of the string of hearts. They look like little fairy leaves. I love the spacing. I love, like again, I don't, I hate saying this. It dresses up a space. It can dress down a space. It can add another element to your bookcase, 
So, and the way the vining is, where it's just very stringy and spacey, it's just also very exotic to look at, as opposed to other vines that you may look at. It draws my eye, and I think it's beautiful. It reminds me of like an eastern forest, and I am from the northeast. And it just reminds me of the moss that grows off of, you know, trees and stumps up here, and you say that like fairies sit on it. So it's very like woodland fairy. Um, and I love the farmhouse vibe. I think the color, that dusty green, gives it a very farmhouse vibe. So it's something I just love having in my house. I would never not be able to have a string of hearts in my house. It is my favorite thing to decorate with. But there is one that beat it out. So what plant do you think would beat out my favorite plant for me to think is the best decor plant. I will say this after three honorable mentions. <laughs> my first honorable mention is wax ivy. This is variegated wax ivy. I think it is beautiful. It's vining and trailing, but you can also look, the leaves are very succulent and they are very thick. I'm from the Northeast, so ivy it has been part of my whole life, my childhood, my everything. When I, you know, was thinking about my first vibes of getting into plants, it was I wanted just ivy growing over books, like this super aesthetic and perfect person I am, which I am not. My second honorable mention is the Monstera adansonii. Now, this is in my honorable mentions because I actually hated my Monstera adansonii and could not figure out what to do with it until a piece of it died and fell off and then I loved the shape of it. Now it's on my mantle in a firewood um, container and I love the way it grows up and I just couldn't get into the shape of the leaves originally and now I'm all about it. There's something about it that I just think is super cool. But that's why it's only my honorable mentions because I'm just getting into it. And my last honorable mention is a snake plant or San Severia. How can you not mention that when you're talking about decor? Just because it's so easy to mention to people when they're like, I have no light, I have no nothing, but I want something green. Of course, every plant wants water and every plant wants light. But if you want one that's really gonna live, you gotta go with the snake plant. And the snake plant, again, adds a different dimension and texture to decor because it's one of the only plants that's kind of like spiky and sticks out as the sands of areas. So sometimes, even though I'm not super into snake plants, I have them because I like the way they look to break up the decor of plant. Guys, it's a pothos. You might be like, meh, a pothos? I waited all this time for a video for you to say your number one favorite home decor piece of a plant is a pothos. Why? Well, Pothos are easy, they grow fast, they bounce back, they are drought tolerant, they're low light tolerant, and they are good filler pieces. I love using pothos as a filler piece. If I want something vining and I want it vining now, throw a pothos up there. I swear to God you'll have a vine in two months. So they grow for me so fast, they grow for me wherever I want them, they tell you when they're thirsty, and it's just so easy to recommend to people when they're like, I have no light, I don't know what to do, but I want something trailing, pothos. Everybody loves, everybody I ever talk to that comes to me for a plant, they're like, I want something trailing, but I don't have a lot of light, and I'm like, just do a pothos. And there's so many different kinds of pothos. There's Marble Queen, there's Golden Pothos, I don't really like the Jade and Pearls, don't ask me why, but I have my own Jade and Pearls Pothos. There's Neon Pothos, so you can even get different colors in your textures of Pothos. And there's something to me when I am, you know, throwing a Pothos over a bookcase and I know it's gonna grow over and cascade that just excites me. Pothos leaves get thick, they get lush, and they don't require much lighter water. And that's why I like them. I want a pothos on top of a bookshelf vining. I want a vine on top of a bookshelf, throw a pothos. I want something in this corner that doesn't get too much light and I want it to vine, throw a pothos. You can sometimes do this with a heart leaf philodendron, but I've had more luck with pothos in darker corners. Oh, that is why pothos is my number one plant for home decor. It's the easiest, grows wherever I want, and it vines quickly. And it's pretty idiot proof for me because if I do mess it up, you clip it, you let it regrow and it's like it never happened. You know, it's they, they're really good to people that are not feeling like taking care of them. <laughs> they're a good lazy girl's plant. There you go. Lazy girl plant that look fantastic in vine corners. That's why Pothos is my favorite. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you thumbs up this video or subscribe to my channel if you want to talk about more plants and other things in life that are going on. But you know, I did my makeup, put on a nice shirt for you guys today. Other than that, I'm just gonna head to my dining room and eat. Have a fantastic day. Bye.